PSA. Mm. These chips different. You know what's something so good you gotta read that? <laughs> you know what's something so good you gotta read the ingredients? Popcorners, sweet and salty kettle corn. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today, I just want to talk about doubt and the opposite of doubt, which is faith. Before I even start talking about doubt, actually, I just want you to understand first and foremost that God loves you. Yeah, you, God loves you. Because I think one thing that breeds doubt is the fact that you don't know that God loves you and you don't understand the, the depth of his love for you and that, I know that's one thing that I struggled with and that's one thing that's one reason why I doubted him a lot because I didn't know he loved me that much but coming to the understanding of his love for me it just does it for me so I was thinking about what I was gonna talk about and I came up with this analogy so you know when you have a boyfriend or when you have a girlfriend right like Back in those days, I used to ask my significant other every time, you love me? <laughs> you love me? You love me? You sure? Or if they say you love me, I'd be like, you sure? Or, you know, and it's just like, wait, first of all, why am I so insecure in myself? I gotta keep asking somebody, they love me, mind you, we're dating. And then on top of that, it's like every time you ask your boyfriend or your girlfriend it could be your, even your mother your father brother sister whoever anytime you ask them do you love me on a continuous basis you make that person feel like wait why do they keep asking me do i love them like are they for real like like it just will get the person make the person feel some type of way because it's like of everything i do for you of all the times we speak and all the sacrifices I make for you, whether it be money, time, whatever, you keep asking me if I love you. Like, what kind of stupid question is that? So that's the same way God feels. Every time in the way that we act, we show him that we don't know, that we don't know that he loves us. And it's just like, he's like, wait, before I knew her or him, I form, I, before I formed him, I knew him or her. Like, I'm making ways for this girl this guy, I'm giving out marriages, I'm giving them breath, I put them in school, all this stuff, I'm making a way where there's no way. Every time, she's always asking me, do I love her? Do I love him? Don't you think that hurts God's feelings? Like, I know I was thinking this the other day and I was like, damn. I really be hurting God's feelings sometimes because it's like, yo, of every time he come through for me, even when he doesn't come through, or it's just like my simple breath. Like I know sometimes what gets me back in check is I always think at the end of the day, I grew up, I lost my mother at a young age. So the fact that I'm here, I was raised perfect. Like I grew up great. I'm not an orphan. I wasn't. Like, you know, that's that enough to show that God loves me. Because some people grow up without mothers and they grow up different. They grow up wayward. They don't know what to do. And everything in their life is because, oh, my mom died. But that's not my story. You know, right now I'm in this, I'm in, I'm swimming in God's grace and all of that. So it's like, God definitely loves me. And I dare not ever question his love for me. So that's the number one thing for me. And that's what I want to share with y'all is know God loves you. Even if you can't see it, like, even if there's no like big way, because I know sometimes we look for the big ways that shows that God's, God exists in our lives. But sometimes just look at the simple things. The fact that you're breathing. You know how many people die in a day? You know how many people walk, go home and you don't see them anymore? Like they don't come home back to their family. Like they die on their way to work or to school or to whatever. You know how many people are not in school? Like when I wake up and I'm looking in my closet and I'm having a hard time figuring out what to wear. Some people only have one. I know my, um, who even says this? I forgot who said it. But somebody in my family was like, if I had one shirt and one shoe, 
If I had one shirt and one shoe, I would definitely know what to wear. And at this point, God really loves me because I have options. And that's it. Like, even if you have only one thing to believe God loves you for, you better hold that one thing until he opens your eyes to show you all the things that he loves you. All the reasons why he loves you. Or all the reasons why you should believe he loves you. So, now that we got that out the way, this is what I want to say. So, I want to share my experience about doubt. Now, me, I'm different. I used to doubt like crazy. Like, at this point, is it Doubt and Thomas? That was me. Like, every little, like, I don't understand. Like, even now that I'm thinking about it, it's just like, wait, why do I, why did I doubt so much? Like, I don't. I don't think, I never used to think that anything good could come out of my life. Anything could, good could come out of me or could be made of me or I wasn't capable of doing anything or like, I just couldn't fathom in what way God would be able to come for me. I mean, come through for me. That's what I meant to say. I couldn't fathom the idea of God using me or of me graduating or of me being successful. And it's just like... It just hindered me from being joyous. It hindered me from being happy, from living, from tr from like, it just hindered my life, that doubt. Like, it hindered my life. Like I could not be happy because it's like every day doubt and doubt and doubt. And I realized that that doubt was pulling me away, was creating a, a bridge between me and Christ. And I think it was recently something so I was going through something and then literally like the Holy Spirit says to me every time you go through something you always allow that situation to pull you away from me and I literally was like you know what I mean that be like that was me like wait you right why is it that every time I go through something that situation and the doubt and everything pulls me away from God when it's even then that I need to become like intertwined, more close. And you see how the devil works? The devil different, him different. But that's how he works. He creates all these type of things that snatch us away from believing that God could ever do anything for us. God could ever come through. God could ever help us to study, help us to pass his test. And it's just like, no, God is there. God is there. So yeah, that was that's me. I used to always doubt and it just made things worse. And then one day I came into this when the after the Holy Spirit slapped me with that, I was like, oh no, I cannot doubt no more because my God is great. God is great. Like God parted the Red Sea. Don't say no more to me. <laughs> like I know I tell myself like I use the Red Sea story to really boost my confidence in him. Cause it's like Imagine the Atlantic Sea doing this and like, like rising, parting in the middle and though, you know how deep the sea is and then it just rises up, like it stands up and you just see the ground of the sea. Stop. The God that I serve did that. What is getting the A on the test? What is getting the A on the test? No, I just want to know what is getting, what? Ah, I wait. Now that I think about it, God really be tight. Because he be like, wait, she, I parted the Red Sea, first of all. All I had to do was this, and it parted. And she think I can't help her graduate summa cum laude or summa cum laude at this point. I don't know how to say it. But she think I can't help her graduate. She think I can't use her to change people. She think I can't use her to rebuild her family. She, at this point, I've been insulting God. 21 years of my life but yeah so long story short this is how I realized that doubt is just from the devil and the opposite of doubt the solution to doubt is faith now I was reading a scripture I was doing a um, a Bible devotional on Bible app follow me on Bible app you already know Alexis from Five Man, so gang, gang, gang. but I was on the app and one of the scriptures was Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And I was reading it and it's about faith. And I was like, whoa. This chapter, different. Faith, different. As 
Christians, we move, we always hear this, we move by faith, not by sight, right? Faith is something that you cannot see. Because if we move by faith, not by sight, that means faith is the opposite of sight. And if sight means you can see, then faith means something you cannot see. So it means that our hope is in something greater than what we see. So as human, although we're human beings, who we are as hearers, our makeup, our, gen, our divine genetic makeup, you know, is faith-based. Like, we cannot operate based off of a doctor's test. We can't operate based on the past. We can't operate based on what we see, the facts. We operate on the faith, the what we don't know. And honestly, that takes courage. That takes, that takes a different type of belief because to operate on because of who we are as humans it's so hard to operate on things that are above us because god says that his ways are not our ways so like i know i used to be so analytical and so like i need to know before i do type of person so it's just like to tell me that despite everything going on around me despite my family being broken despite the fact that i'm not getting a's despite the fact that I got acne on my face. You try to tell me I'm still going to get married one day. You try to tell me I'm going to be a preacher. You try to tell me I'm going to be a leader to nations. You try to tell me I'm going to get find the saving grace of Christ. You try to tell me all these things. Meanwhile, everything around me is telling me the opposite. But then the word of God says, first of all, you need to move on things that are not seen. Like, all these things around you, that don't matter. Because it's what is your... What will happen, your reality is based on what you cannot see. And the leader of who, what you cannot see is God, the doer of all things. Hold up. Now, I just preached to myself. But the leader of the things you cannot see is God, the leader, the doer of all things. Nothing is too, too, nothing is impossible. You know, so like, that concept is what I had to like grow deep into my head. In order to move from doubt into faith, into doing what I need to do, into doing work, into believing, into living a better life. And so here are some of the scriptures as I read Hebrews 11 that stood out to me and that I, I really want to share with you guys. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 says, Through their faith, NLT version, through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. So Moses and them... <laughs> Abraham and them, David, Jacob and them, they earned a good reputation because it was through their faith that they moved. So maybe God would say, maybe God would tell me, move to Atlanta, right? And I'm like, move to Atlanta? But through faith, by faith, I moved to Atlanta. And then things started to happen. And so that builds a good reputation for me because it's like, she did what God said to do, and now she's she's reaping the results. You know what I mean? Like, these movers, these game changers, Moses, Abraham, all of them, they moved by faith. And because they moved by faith, generations are lit, and generations still know their name. Had Moses, that was a stutterer, did not move by faith, we will all still be in Egypt, making stuff and being slaves. For the Egyptians. That's not my question. Had Abraham not moved by faith, first of all, who, where, who, we, we would not be acquiring no land. There would be no land. There would be no new. There would be no, no testimony because Abraham was the fa is the father of every all the generations. So at this point, if Abraham didn't have faith, we wouldn't, we wouldn't come to know Christ. We wouldn't come to know all these little other miracles that came from the lineage of Abraham. And now, everybody remembers Abraham. Everybody remembers Moses. Everybody remembers Joseph. Everybody remembers David. Because they move by faith. So faith, that's one key right there. Faith will give you a good reputation. And faith is also how God moves in your life. Like, if you don't have faith, God cannot move. For instance, I will pray, God, um, I'll use examples with tests because that's a lot. That's one of the ongoing struggles. 
God, help me pass this test. And then I get, well, you know how before the test, normally you meet with other students and they be like, oh yeah, bruh, I stayed up studying all night. This is drawing hard. I don't even know, man. I'm finna, I'm finna fail. Da -da 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 -da. And then doubt starts to catch you and it's just like, yo. Even the smartest person is saying this test is hard. How much more me? Then you automatically, what you have asked God to do, what, were you, what he was about to do, he's now frozen because doubt has overcome you and you've limited him. It, it's in some cases that God really be like, at this point, let me show this girl. <laughs> let me show this girl me because she don't know me. But sometimes he just be like, until you release that doubt, is when the blessings will fall. Don't hinder God from moving because you, your human mind is too small. Next, next, uh, no. So Hebrews 11, 15. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And he's talking about Abraham. And this scripture is talking about Abraham and how... They were moving into the new land God had promised them. So, sometimes, my pastor always says that desperation is key. If you're not desperate, sometimes things can't happen. Because you got to get desperate before you before you understand. Like, so you know some people, they wait till things get bad before they end up doing good. It's that type of thing. You got to be desperate for God to do something for you before sometimes you'll, you'll forget about your human mind. Like, if I didn't have... If I wasn't blessed with the to be going to Howard or to have clothes or to have a family and stuff, if God said move, I will move because at this point, anything can be better than my certain um, circumstance. So Abraham and them moved by faith because they were desperate for God to use them to do something new. God said that their des descendants will be more than the grains of sand. So if you're telling me that my descendants will take over the whole earth and right now I don't even have one child I'm finna go if they weren't desperate they would have went back they would have went back to the old stayed in their old small little town and not have been able to venture the depths of the earth the the length they wouldn't have been able to do that had they not been desperate enough to move by faith and not by sight I said that faith will keep you running to what God has said even though you cannot see it so if you have faith in God who is almighty all-knowing all-powerful and is everywhere at one time you will go towards what he tells you to go to rather than go back and sit in what's uncomfortable for you because you're not sure always be sure in God because God is not a liar and God the God who began it with you he will surely finish it with you if you continue to place your life in his hands if you continue to make him lord over your life hebrews eleven twenty three. 23 it was by faith that moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born they saw that god had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command i wrote down faith will cause you to disregard earthly rules earthly confinement and also earthly confinement because you know you can do anything you can pass the class everyone on campus claims is difficult. You can have a lifetime of trustworthy friends. You can fix your broken home. You can bring your grades back up. You as a child of God, you move by faith, not by sight, not as the world does. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So Moses' parents did what they had to do to preserve Moses' life because they understood that God would use Moses, right? And so they disregarded the rules of the, the land. They didn't care. I'm going to preserve my son because I know that God is going to use him. That's faith. Even though they were under oppression, they had faith and preserved his life. And because they had faith, God used Moses to save the whole, the whole Israel game. He used Moses to save them. So having faith can cause you not to care about rules and what the world says and what the world does yeah the doctor says you're gonna have you have cancer you're gonna die in this amount of time you know my faith tells me that by his stripes i'm healed at this point i can be on my dying bed and best believe my faith will cause god to come down in that last dying minute and visit me and heal me 
and everybody will know my name and know my God because of my faith. Wait, stop playing with me. Faith will cause you. There's this class on campus. Everybody, every, not one person said that class was passable. Everybody said that class was, you're going to fail the class. And you know what that does to you? Because you know, as people, like when you're on campus, you always ask people, oh, how, how was this class? Because you, you want to take easy classes. And that class was by force. Like I had to take it, I had to take it in order to graduate or to complete my major requirements. And everybody was like, oh, it's difficult, it's difficult. Yeah. And then me, being me in those times, you know, I was working on my doubt and stuff. So I'm like, no, 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 I can't listen to what other people say. You gotta have faith in my God. As long as I apply myself and allow God to do his thing, I'm gonna pass the class. Who passed the class? Me. <laughs> so faith will cause you not to care about what people say, what people do, what this world does, because you don't belong to this world. You belong to an eternal kingdom. This world will crumble, fall down, and die. <laughs> Yo, I need to stop. No, but seriously, this world will be finito. But me, I know after this world is done, I have somewhere to go to finish living, living my best life. So my faith is going to cause me to do things that this world, people in this world will be like, uh huh. But it's normal because people of the world, they don't have the capacity to understand the rule breaking God that we serve. Like the, their human minds cannot fathom it. Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God has promised. For God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Amen. I wrote, God used our ancestors to do great and mighty things. And by faith, they were able to do those things. Some didn't even get to see the fruit of their labor and endured faith. But now it is because of that faith that we have a 66 book a 66 chapter living and breathing book of life that propels us into another level of faith. And why emphasis on another? Because if in those times their faith caused whole seas to be parted, then imagine what your faith can do now. Moses and them, they worked so hard believing and trusting God for what God said he was going to do for them. Yet they didn't even get to see or to taste the fruit of their labor and endured faith. But because of them, we have this, this book, this book. Every time you have an issue, every time you need a word, every time you need a reminder, every time you need something, every time you want to know how to have faith, now you have this book. You have examples, you have people you can read about that will teach you. That will show you the different moves and ways of God. And it's because of their faith. And that is why we have this. It's because of their faith. And that is why we know the promises of God. And it's just like, how much more you now? Because of your faith in God, you, you, you begin to pray into your unborn children's life. Because of your faith in God, you begin to do things that is just like, wait, that's not even me. And so the faith of our ancestors puts us in a position not to even be faithless. You can't even come and say that you're faithless because this book, it nullifies, it voids that doubt word. It destroys it, in fact. It, it erases it out of your vocabulary as a Christian. This book and Abraham and Moses and them. <laughs> it just tell, don't doubt, don't doubt, don't doubt. Next and final point, James 2.17. To wrap it all up, James 2.17. So also faith, if it does not have works in parentheses, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up, that's the definition of works, then faith by itself is destitute of power, inoperative and dead. So, okay, Alexis, you're saying faith this, faith that, have faith, look at our ancestors, blah, blah, blah. But... Once I have faith, when what? Like, but when you have faith, faith goes hand in hand with working. So let me give you an example. My faith is allowing me to believe God for a law career that is different. Like my law path, the career path of law, whatever. I'm trusting God that he's going to 
make me diff like a different type of person in that law field like my faith is telling me that i'm gonna graduate summa cum laude loud however you say it at this point none of my concern i'm graduating with it so it's just like that faith my faith is that right but is it enough to sit here and be like oh yeah i have faith in god that this is gonna happen no because god needs to work like he needs to he needs to work on the plan, right? And God doesn't work. God is not like mag, ma magical in the sense that things will drop from the sky and happen, right? He uses people and things and you. So if I say I'm believing God for all ends this semester, and I sit in my bed and eat popcorners and don't study, and I don't get all A's, do you think I should blame God? No, because faith without works is dead. I need to make sure that I'm working and doing all I can in my human capacity to make sure that when God is ready to work, he can use something. Half of us always believe in God for something. Yet, we're not giving him fertile ground to work with. You want a job. Mind you, your Indeed has zero, zero apply for. <laughs> Mind you, you don't even have a resume. Mind you, you want a good marriage, but your attitude, different. You in the past, but you always skipping class. Like, as long as you do the work, I'm telling you, God will do it. God will come through. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I've witnessed it. As long as you put in the work, God will come through. So yes, um, that just wraps it up. So what have I said? I said, I talked about doubt and how that works. Then I talked about the opposite of doubt, which is faith and how applying faith can help you one, to overcome your doubting self and two, to believe and trust God more and three, make your life a whole lot happier, joyful and easier. So let's all move towards having faith. I know it's not easy to just wake up and just believe that things will get better. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes you wake up and it's just like everything else is louder. But just be intentional. Sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. But if you're intentional about believing in God in a way that some, you will look back and be like, wait, I don't even know how I believe like that. Then God will come through. If you're a prayer to God, you know you can pray God to help you become secure in yourself and in your faith in Him. You can pray to God and ask Him to um, increase your faith in Him. You can pray to God and ask Him to keep you grounded because God is the anchor. When the billows roll, He keeps us grounded. Pray and ask God to help you because we're human. And sometimes our humanness gets the best of us. But prayer and reading this book really changes things. You know, sometimes you have to faith it till you make it. You know, people say fake it till you make it. You gotta faith it till you make it. You gotta believe that God is gonna do something until you see it. And then when, once you see it, at that point, nobody can tell you nothing. Nobody can tell you nothing because now you've seen it for yourself. So just get to that point where at least you see it for yourself and then, and then things will become Easier and easier and easier and easy. Then you're gonna come back and gonna be like, wait, did I just speak English? Wait. You're gonna come back and you're gonna be like, yo, Lex, he told me, he told me, man, he told me that. If I believe things are happening and they're happening, and I'm just gonna be here happy for you smiling because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, let's stop doubting God and allow Him to do His thing. And allow him to help you flourish so that we can have more testimonies so that we can continue to trample on the enemy and we can also draw people to Christ. Okay. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up. What else do we got to say at the end of these videos? Share. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.